first in your life? Is Christ first? Is He foremost in rank in your life? Before you do anything, is He the one that comes to your mind first? Rank, position, and importance. You know what it means to make Jesus your Lord? Right there. Right there. Too many people think they're Christians because they go to church. But you know what? Going to church does not make you a Christian. Just like entering a garage makes you a car. You can stay in the car in the garage all you like. You're not going to change into a car. You can come to church all you like, but until you make that decision to make Christ your number one, foremost in rank, position, and importance in your life, then we're just playing games. We're just playing games. Eh, pastor, syempre, ikaw ganyan. Pastor ka eh. Dapat lang. Yes. For me. But you know what? We're no different. The standard is not different for me and then another one for you. It's the same standard. It's the same. So yes, you're right. Jesus is my Lord. That means He's number one in my life. And if He's your Lord, then it's about time that we start treating Him like one. Let Him be Lord of your life. Let Him be foremost in position, rank, and importance in your life. You see, the main purpose of the first fruits offering is this. Honoring your God. That's what this is all about. Honoring your God. Making Him first. But, lest I put a guilt trip on anyone, do you realize that even making Him first is by His grace? If you're, think, if you're sitting on your chair right now and you're thinking, you know what, I've been living my life, grabe, I've been a Christian for so long, but I've never really made him first. Well, once in a while maybe, but not all the time. Ladies, before you go shopping, have you asked him? And all the husbands said, no, no, you better not say if your wife is next to you. Okay. I mean, seriously, if you give first fruits, and you also pay your tithes, what you're saying is, this is not the only thing that belongs to the Lord. Everything else, everything else in my wallet, everything else in my accounts, everything else under my stewardship belongs to God. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to be legalistic and it's like, Lord, I need to go to the toilet, may I? You know, and get really facetious about this. That's not the point. It's an attitude of the heart. Does God want you to go shopping, ladies? Of course! Of course, yes! He wants you to enjoy. But also, you know, but also understand this. That just as much joy as you have in shopping, hopefully it will be the same amount of joy when the Lord tells you to bless someone else. See? Nothing wrong with shopping. You want to go shopping for houses? By all means, go. You know, it's so easy to get a house. Just pay for it. It's yours. Right? People keep saying, it's so hard to get a house nowadays. It's not hard. Just pay for it. You want a Benz? You want a Jaguar? Just pay for it. It's yours. You can drive it. Promise. <laughs> it's not hard. It's very easy. Now, the thing is this. We think, I don't have enough. So you're not thinking like God yet. Not yet. So you just, you have words, right? So speak the words. I have words. I can believe. Therefore, I speak. So just speak. It's not going to cost you much. That car is mine. That house is mine. And just say it. Just say it. And then, watch God move. You know why? Because for us, there is no stress. The moment you stress, you're in the flesh. He said, come to me. All of you are weary, heavy laden, and all stressed out. And I will give you rest. I will give you rest. So, you just chill. Relax. 
and do it God's way. God wanted light, He just spoke. He wanted earth, He just spoke. He wanted vegetation, He just spoke. And then He said, follow me. Just do it the way I do. That's the faith of God. Speak. Because Mark 11, 23 says, you will have whatever you say. That's how wonderful this life is. The first fruit is all about honoring God. Let me show you this one. Okay? It's all about honoring the Lord. So, watch. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. When you honor the Lord, He reciprocates. Now, I know I already said that when you're in Christ, you're already blessed. You're already rich. Why? Because he became poor that through his poverty, you might be made rich. And I found that verse very interesting in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Because it says there, if you will look carefully, it says, he became poor. He became. In other words, he was not. Right? He was not. He became. So he came from somewhere else, and then he became that. So he was rich. He became poor. So that through... His poverty. I found that very interesting. Through His poverty. You know what that tells me? That poverty was ours. He was the one rich. But when He became poor, He made that poverty His. He didn't say anymore, so that through your poverty, which became His, He didn't say that. He took it, so He doesn't even say, remember, you were poor? You can be rich now. He didn't say that. He goes, you know what? It's my poverty. Because the cross is about an exchange. It's about an exchange. He doesn't even think your poverty. He just thinks your prosperity. He became sick that you might be made well. He became a curse that you might walk in the blessing. He was the curse. He didn't say you were the curse. You were. No longer are. Not when you're in Christ. That's why here it says he responds to that. You are blessed. But you see, every blessing starts in the spirit. What we need is for the spiritual blessing to become material. And that's where sowing and reaping come in. Because we understand it's not just about speaking. Because faith without works is dead. Faith always produces works. Faith doesn't prove. Faith simply acts. Faith simply knows. When there was a red sea in front, Jesus, uh, God just said, walk right through. Walk right through. See? And that's what they did. The sea parted and they went forward. Why? Because faith always goes forward. Faith has no reverse gear. Have you ever thought about that? He didn't say, go back. In fact, he said, I don't want them to go back. I won't make them go the way of the Philistines because they might get into war and they might return, God said to Moses. That's why he said, we're not going the shortcut. We'll take a different way. I don't want them to return. He says, no matter what happens, don't bring them back to Egypt. God doesn't like going back. In fact, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 says, he takes no pleasure in those who draw back. There is no pleasure in God in drawing back. Why? The sheaf. The sheaf is a representation of man. Remember the dream of Joseph? He had, a, he had two dreams. And he said, Behold, I saw my sheaf standing up and the eleven sheaves bowing down before it. And even, the, even his brothers understood. You mean to say we're going to bow before you? They understood the sheaf represented the human being. The word wave... The word wave means to lift up. When you wave it, when you wave the sheaf, you lift it up and wave it before the Lord. And what this talks about is the Christ is our first fruits. You lift up Christ, the man. He is our first fruits. And what's going to happen? You're going to do it, see, to be accepted on your behalf. Christ